Welcome to Postscript. Here we hope to answer your questions and help you dig deeper into the messages and sermons at FaithBridge by talking with the teacher of the day. Well, hello and welcome to Postscript. My name is Adam McIntyre and I am here with Wayne Risher, who just delivered an incredible sermon on Thank the you. wise men. Thank you so much for being here with Thank us. You. Uh, the story of the wise men is one of those stories that uh, there's so much more, so much to it. In fact, it's, it's probably uh, so much that it's impossible to cover in 25 minutes. And so um, there are a lot of questions about specifically things like, um, were the wise men actually at the manger scene? Right. Or um, what did the gifts mean? Like what were the significance of the gifts? Can you elaborate on the oh, wise men oh, story? Yeah. Good, good questions. Well, first of all, let me just say that I think a lot of people do ask about the wise yeah. men and if they were at the manger scene because there is historical evidence, right? In Scripture even says when Jesus, uh, when the wise men showed up, they didn't say it was at a manger. Right. Uh, they said it came to a house mm -hmm. and it was a child then. And we know that Herod also was looking for children who were two years and younger. So we know their journey, if it took about a thousand miles or more and maybe a year or more, uh, we know they showed up after the birth of Jesus. Right. So from a timing perspective, you know, should I have my wise men at the manger scene? Is that biblically accurate representation? Right. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely, because they were definitely part of the Christ story. Mm -hmm. But their timing was actually after the manger okay. um, as they rolled in a little bit later to the story. Okay. Uh, God was calling them even later. And uh, I love that because, you know, Mary and Joseph had to be thinking when all these wise men rolled up, uh, and their camels and their entourage, they had to be thinking, wow, you know, there's some government officials passing through the land. And I'm sure they stood there just kind of with their mouths opening, wondering, I wonder who these people are. Imagine what happened when they uh, realized they're rolling up to our house. Right. And they're thinking, like, are we in trouble? You know, is this the IRS coming to garnish our wages? Right. You know, is there some problem here? And they realized, no, these men are here for the baby. Mm -hmm. I'm sure Mary and Joseph were just like, oh, this is still happening to right. us. Like what happened to us in the manger, this story is still going on. And now what we heard and treasured in our hearts is being confirmed even by the arrival of the wise men later. Right. I'm sure that was a special, a special moment. Um, you, you ask Adam about the gifts. Mm -hmm. So uh, I'll just admit my ignorance for a minute and say that I often thought, oh sure, we give gifts at Christmas time because the wise men brought gifts, sure. right? Yeah. Uh, oh, no, no, not, not because of the wise men, but because God gave His Son. That's the reason we give right. gifts, right? Yeah, so you want to, oh, how did this tradition all start? Well, the gifts, though, while I mentioned in the message that they actually bowed down and they worshipped, uh, not only with their posture, um, certainly with their hearts, but also by giving the best that they had, which right. were the gifts. Well, the gifts themselves were not actually, you know, God doesn't call us to give Him gifts. Mm -hmm. He does call us to give Him His heart, right. uh, our heart. So we, we do that in response to a relationship with Him. But the gifts, what was actually going on there is very significant and unique. Um, the gifts actually represent three roles that Christ will play. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one, they gave gold, which is a gift fit for a king. Right. And so they were affirming his kingship and lordship. And uh, as the temple was filled with gold, right, uh, that the kings were in, and certainly the temple of the Lord, right? The second gift that they gave was the frankincense, which was a gift that um, uh, often the priests would use in the temple. Uh, it was an incense, a fragrant incense. So uh, they were really foretelling that God would be our high priest, that Jesus would be the one to connect us to God. And the third gift they gave was the myrrh, which, you know, when they embalm a body, they would put a little uh, fragrant oil on it so that it would smell pretty. Right. And so they got myrrh, uh, which would represent that Jesus, the Savior of the world, would die for our sins. Mm -hmm. So in bringing the gifts, the wise men were not only worshiping, but they were actually affirming who Christ was right. as our high priest, our Savior, and as our King and Lord. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's the thing I love about the wise men, you know, because they're teaching so much in what's happening there. Uh, and so then, you know, as that whole thing happens and transpires, um, uh, speaking of the gifts and sort of where they end up in the story, you think, well, in verse 12, the wise men just sort of tick off. Right. And uh, we don't hear from them again. Um, well, though their, their contribution actually contributes um, to the end of the story or to help the story continue on because uh, at the end of the passage there I read that Herod was upset. Right. He found out the Magi had left and they didn't come back and report to him where the Christ child was. So they were, they were upset. 
he, he was upset. And um, the Lord told Joseph in a dream to take Mary and the baby and to flee to Egypt. Mm -hmm. Well, in their fleeing, you know, I wonder how did that happen? Right. It wasn't like uh, he just cashed in his 401k sure, yeah. and uh, said, hey, I got to go to get out of Dodge. I got to go to some other place and uh, I need some cash to do it. And it wasn't like he just rolled into Egypt and said, hey, you know, I'm a carpenter. Can you put me to work tomorrow? You know. Right. But if you use your sanctified imagination a little bit, you realize the hand of God is all through the story. Mm -hmm. And he's even providing for Mary and Joseph and Jesus in their journey to Egypt because they had just been given three gifts of great value right. that they were able to trade in for the capital necessary to not only make that journey, but to stay in Egypt, according to the scripture, until King Herod was dead. Right. And so that didn't come by accident. That was actually the hand of God providing and you know, Mary and Joseph were thinking, whoa, you know, what are we going to do? God right. just told you in a dream to leave. And Joseph's wondering, well, you know, as the dad of his family, uh, I guess we've got the gold frankincense and myrrh. You think we should sell that? Well, sure. You know, yeah. it's, a, it's an amazing thing. So <clears throat> kind of at the end, wrapping all that up, uh, I think the rhythm that the wise men teach us, I mentioned the manger scene that right. my kids loved when they were kids. Um, I think the rhythm that the wise men teach us, um, I, I think it's good for me anyway to go ahead and keep my wise men in my manger scene. Absolutely. Because when I look at that picture, I see the birth of Christ and I see even how the wise men came later. Mm -hmm. And it reminds me of the three things, you know, the seeking Him, the worshiping Him, and allowing Him to change us, go away in a different way right. uh, as they did. I'm going to leave them in my manger scene. Absolutely. Uh, I think they tell the Christ story in a way that I want to go into my 2016 personally, mm -hmm. um, seeking God in a new way, finding Him in His Word and prayer, um, seeking deeper community with other Christians um, who can encourage me even in my faith. Absolutely. And um, so I think that's where I'm headed in 2016. That's why I hope for Faith yeah. Bridgers too. I hope Absolutely. that they'll follow the wise men's pattern in 2016. Absolutely. Wayne, thank yeah. you so much. Oh, that yes. was incredibly helpful. Thank I love you. the way that you can you can read the, the surface level story, but then as you start to dig deeper, you see all these puzzle pieces start coming together and, and the story just becomes even more three-dimensional and uh, just even more kind of awe-inspiring as, you, right. as right. you look at it. And so thank you so much for sharing that. And thank you all for tuning in. We will see you all next week. Thanks for joining us for PostScript. Help us keep the podcast interactive by submitting your questions during the morning services. Learn more at faithbridge.org slash postscript.